beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed and stay blessed. I thought about my life, truly speaking, when Dr. Billy Graham went to be with the Lord. And I said, one day, our children's children, if Christ tarries, will be the ones talking about us when we are gone. Come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am all i know sing it from the depth of your heart search me through and through till my heart One more time. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Will you search me? Search me. Yes, I will lay down my idols, the thrones I have made, everything that has taken my heart. Sing, Lord, I will bow, I will bow to you.
Lord Jesus, we live in a world that is used to trivializing you and all you are. But Lord, tonight we truly confess that you are everything. Please don't mind our pride. We act as though we can do without you. The truth is we cannot do without you. Whether we admit it or not, it is the truth. For no man, no man can do anything against the truth but for the truth. Lord Jesus, tonight, we thank you for the things you are about to do. But Lord, our focus tonight, first and foremost, is our hearts. There are people, thousands of people scattered across this arena and several others following from different nations of the world. Lord, please take our hearts. Please take our hearts. We are wasting our time if we do not hand our hearts over to you. Hallelujah. I'm hearing a song in my spirit. What can wash the days where people just cajole people you know when people come like this I know many of you have heard of the miracles many of you will experience it God wants us to experience it but let me tell you this I have noticed that most of those who live long 
are not miracle workers in fact most healing evangelists did not cross 80. yes it's true those who really really enjoyed the grace for longevity are people who are interested in the souls of people hallelujah now nothing wrong with miracles we're going to be experiencing the hand of god shortly but it came strong upon our being concerned about the fact that there are people who are really going to hell it's not a lie it's true whether you believe it or not it's not the issue i can argue that there's no oxygen in the air it does not stop it there are some of you looking at me right now the overflow the truth of the matter is that at your current state without missing words it is true that it is not heaven you are going to the goal is not to scare you this is not the issue of scaring it is the truth there's nothing to scare you about it is true and books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life listen carefully whosoever's name it's on earth yet that we celebrate people apostle joshua selman whosoever's name was not found he was not asked why his name was not there if your name was not there that's the end of it are we together listen look this is a very serious serious issue there has to come a time in a man's life when you break your pride and say jesus i need you i don't care whether you have been a preacher for donkey years i'm not asking you how many sick bodies you killed I'm not asking you what name your members call you. Are we together? There are people outside overflow one, two, three. The truth is there are people who need Jesus Christ. And a day is going to come, whether we like it or not. That day, the very judge of the earth is coming. It's coming. If he said it in his word, then it is true. and be serious with God be serious with God it's amazing how people come out for altar call they come out for altar call and you see them playing around and you know they are not serious I'm not saying you must cry but there is an attitude of seriousness you don't play games with God are we together I want you to run to Jesus like there's fire on the mountain because there really is one two Apostle, I'm ready to break my pride and humble myself. It's not a call to condemnation. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, make your way. I've cried for my own life, my own life as a man of God. I've cried and rolled in the presence of God, crying for my own life. So don't, don't think that this is just some showmanship. Three, make your way. It's not by force. It's not compulsory. You can choose to sit down. But you can choose to say let tonight be that night lord you have to win this war over my life four the holy spirit is still speaking to people you may have money you may have anointing you may have cars but let me tell you this the bible says if your hope is only in this life you are of all men of all politicians, of all businessmen, of all men of God, miserable. There has to be a cry from your heart. Lord, I need you is a sign of humility. Is there someone still joining them? Very quickly, I want to pray. Your coming to Jesus means I am ready to close the door to all the friends and personalities in my life that are not ready to head my direction. Your coming to Jesus is a revelation that Lord, I am ready to be serious with you. It's not just you are coming as a preamble to receiving a miracle and then you run back. No. In plenty and in none, leaving you is no longer an option in my life. Hallelujah. I want to lead you. Some of you are crying. Let me tell you this. If you have any loved one who is not saved 
I hope their names and your prayer request. Because I know that some of us, if I ask you what is on your prayer request now, the only thing is wife, husband, promotion, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you this. It's, it's funny, but from heaven, you will still see your loved ones in hell. You will know they are the ones. It's not that you are going to look at them and say, I don't know, I don't. It's a lie. You will know that this one is my mother. This one. Now, you can't do anything about those who have gone. But there are people now you know in your neighborhood around your life. It is the Lord's desire that all men be saved. Please, if you are a pastor here, take the issue of soul winning seriously. Be careful. All these things we learn around in the name of mentorship. I believe in men. Be careful. Many people are veering off. There is, a, there is a path that brings power and grace. At the end of your life, you don't want to be a wise master builder. Be, be careful. The flamboyant does not necessarily mean God is there. Be careful. Especially for some of us who are younger ministers, we must be wise. You don't just swallow everything hook, line, and sinker just because it is being done. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There are churches where an altar call is not made for more than two years. Then one day they organize one hilarious, pretentious revival. And then just draw one or two people. It's a joke. It's a joke. More than healing. More than miracles. More than getting a job. More than all of this. Is the eternal destiny of men. I am interested in knowing that I'm not praying for someone going to hell. It's a waste. I'm interested in knowing that I'm not teaching someone a principle to prosper. When he's already gone to hell. It's a waste. I will teach you about the finances and the kingdom life when we know that your eternal destiny is secure. Those of us who are standing, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, just one prayer before I pray for them. Lord, make me serious with you. Make me serious with you. Please pray. It's a very serious prayer. There are some of us, you are not going to hell. But the truth of the matter is you are not serious with God. No. Mm -mm. There's nothing about God that, that can steal your passion. It's not priority. You see people function in the house of God and you say, oh, these ones, it's because they are called into ministry. There's no such thing as that. It's your hunger. Especially for some of us sisters, we have to pray. Lord, make me serious with you. I don't care how many men like you. I don't care what they have told you. If you are not serious with God, your life is in shambles. It's true. Lord, make me serious with you. Let nothing else sustain the ability to take your place in my life. That's a very good prayer. Hallelujah. Come live in me Oh my Lord Take hold Come live in me and I will rise on you. you are a parent here. Yeah? When your children get to the age of discretion, the moment they can think and they can understand, lead them to Jesus consciously. It is very responsible. Lead them to Jesus. If you have not done so as you go back home, don't just say my children are smart. Call them. Preach the gospel to them. 
the moment they, are, they can think they should be born again please be take let nobody stay in your roof you have a neighbor that is squatting with you he's not serious it doesn't matter no it does no it does no it does they can choose to reject jesus that's all right no one goes to hell because he's a sinner everybody goes to hell because he rejected jesus that is the sin that takes men to hell i rejected him i had a choice but i rejected him jesus carry your load and walk out of my life those of you in front here i truly appreciate you whatever you have in this life if jesus is not above it is useless let me just tell you the truth i want to lead you in an honest prayer i know some of you are crying overflow one two three those online please listen i'm not asking you whether you're a business mogul i'm not asking you whether you have how many degrees all those things are useless when you are no longer here i'm going to lead you in an honest prayer and i want you to pray from the depth of your heart listen to what you are saying and pray it loud are you ready now say after me with all your heart passionately lord jesus I love you with all my heart this night I make up my mind and I make a commitment to serve you and to live for you from today till eternity I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life I declare that my sins are forgiven I declare that the life of God eternal life is mine today Holy Spirit I receive you as the life of God in my spirit I declare that I'm a child of God forever let me pray for you father I thank you for these ones they have unashamedly come the Bible says that if you are ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father, Jesus speaking. Lord, these ones have come opening their hearts genuinely to receive of your grace. I ask you, oh God, you who is the helper of us all, help them. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the righteousness of God is at work in you the grace to live a victorious Christian life the grace for passion and intimacy with God is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ every pain and every legal access the devil has over your life is hereby broken forever in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I congratulate every one of you not listen I know that some of you are rededicating your life to Christ there are a number of you those in here i just want you to walk out this way and then the various overflows i know that there are people attending to them they will have your details i praise you very quickly and you return back to join us in the service i salute you thank you so much for your courage your life will never be the same god bless you please direct them make sure someone is directing them make sure someone is directing them hallelujah Amen. Please sit down. Hallelujah. There are two ministries that I believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension. Two very great anointings. I really believe with all my heart and and it's been confirmed from different people seasoned veterans of the gospel across the earth number one is the healing ministry i believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry it's true even some of us that supposedly walk in it the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry the healing ministry i'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray we'll get to the business of the night 
the healing ministry is very important it played a major role the challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer Christ and his purposes because the healing ministry is a means is a sign that points men to Jesus it's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the Christ himself the second ministry that I believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance it's true this wealth transfer that you've heard people say I believe that God has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant God releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money are we together the average person's idea about money is just some kind of um, it is just a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that I am successful there is a place for that but if that is the scope of your idea then you do not need any wealth transfer are we together yes so God must first walk upon our hearts is the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in Zaria angelic feathers gold dust silver dust you know people started having these strange encounters and one I remember one night the Lord told me he said I'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry it didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn people will go to pray and for hours all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality and God said no if I don't take it away one demon will give a, an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people and so God withdrew that experience God only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so god will not release it until the body is taught the money is safer with bill gates is safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors because they have worked on their minds they are better treasurers for god than us so all it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming but not not some money monger kind of thing it won't come that way anyway i just thought to share that let's look at the ministry of jesus luke chapter 6 i study the gospels a lot because the ministry of jesus inspires me He's the greatest model that I have and I like to I like to study his idea what did he do what was captured in his ministry Luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19 Luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 19 this is Jesus now having the sermon on the mount okay I'll just read it from here and he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples a great multitude of people listen out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear now listen carefully the people came to hear amplified says to listen to him he came to hear him and to be healed there is a relationship between hearing and being healed they didn't just come to be healed they came to hear and to be healed verse 18 or still verse 17 to be healed of all their diseases 18 and they that were vexed with unclean spirits so 
we see the kind of people that came for Jesus' meetings. Those who were sick. They were sick. Terribly diseased. They came to listen to him. There was something he taught them about listening to his words and the healing power of God. So they came to hear and to be healed. The second category of people we see, they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed. Unclean spirits. The source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits. And the Bible says, and the whole multitude, listen, sought to touch him. Why? For there went power out of him to heal them. I love the ministry of Jesus. So the Bible tells us why the people got healed. That there was power. Other versions say virtue. There was something that Jesus had that would leave him into the people. And the moment it entered them, they would discover that their sicknesses were gone. Are we together? Hmm. Acts chapter 10, when you read verse 38, Peter was teaching. That was the salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Listen, it says who went about doing good. Went about doing good went about doing good so we see other things that jesus did that were not captured he didn't just heal the sick alone he didn't just deliver the oppressed alone he went about doing good breakthrough is a good thing restoration is a good thing he went about doing good and then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus' ministry. And, and by the way, I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry. Jesus' ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven. Are we together now? He said, it is expedient that I go. Why? So that the comforter will come. It is to your advantage, advantageous to you that I go. Because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the Spirit himself, without measure, so that we can partake of that Spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the Father had sent me. This is Jesus speaking. The Father sent me. I now send you as the Father sent me. Both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The Father sent me with power. And every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and there, wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results. At some point in this service, we should see the superiority of light over darkness. Is that true? At some point in this service, God should be able to step over your issue. To see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this. Just like that. Is that true? If that happens, then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of Jesus. But listen to me brothers and sisters, if this does not happen, we are wasting God's time. And we are wasting the time of God's precious people. 
That's why we prepare for all of the meetings, especially the miracle service. Because you have not just come to watch a man. You have come to see an extension of the ministry of Jesus. You have come with your requests. You have come with your medical reports. You have come with your pain. You have come with all kinds of oppression. You have come with all kinds of closed heaven. And you're saying, Lord, if you are the only one I know who can help me, let me tell you, your coming is faith enough. Did you hear what I said? Your leaving your house to come is faith enough. It's true. Like a patient goes to the hospital. Once you are in the hospital, just leave the rest to the doctor. Then the doctor begins to prescribe. And this is what is happening to us. An extension of the ministry of Jesus. Let's look at one scripture. Mark chapter 1, 21. Mark chapter 1 and verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, still the ministry of Jesus, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and taught. It's interesting how Jesus held his crusades. He would take out time, not just to preach, but to teach. Jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive. Are we together? If the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone, it, it becomes volatile. The people receive it and then it just evaporates. But when they are taught, it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received. You can lose something you have received. It's true. You can lose healing. Demons can leave people and re-enter them again. But when the word of God is taught, it gives you the basis. Are we together now? So Jesus taught in their synagogues. We're reading. It's, it's a long reading. Let's see how far we can go. Just keep, just continue. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. 23. And there was in their synagogue. I love Jesus. See how his miracle service was. As soon as he just finished preaching. It was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom. And there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit. And the demons began to cry out. 24. Saying let us alone what have we to do with thee. Thou Jesus of Nazareth. Art thou come to destroy us. We know who you are. The holy one of God. And so on and so forth. And Jesus rebuked him saying. Hold your peace. And come out of him. This is Jesus for you. This is Jesus for you. Because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him let me tell you this when you command an unclean spirit and it goes it is a big deal did you hear what i said <laughs> doctors can treat sickness they can cast out devils machines can show an elongated lung or heart but it cannot show the spirit sitting there are you hearing what i'm saying these spirits are living entities they can hear they have a system and a structure. They were designed to respect some people and disobey some people. Are we together? They understand ranking in the spirit. So when you issue a command, as Jesus did, and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion. Are we together? Yes, it is. It truly is proof of dominion. Look at Jesus used this. The people were astonished. 
They said our priests and rabbis didn't do this. They couldn't do this. I hope you know that while all the priests used to preach, that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing. But the words were not potent enough to force them to leave. So they kept coming service after service. May you not be a man of God that cohabits with demons. And that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting. And the demons that cause poverty, failure, whatever it is, you share the grace and they share the grace with you. And you go out. No, sir. Haba. What then is the excellency of light over darkness? Your presence should discomfort the gate of hell so well that there is no pretending about it. That's why some of you bring people here. You notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening, they want to run away. It's not them. It's not them. The devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation, Satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again. But tonight the devil is a liar. It's too late. Really, it's too late. 28. And immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Let's see what happened. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever. And anon they tell him of her. Now Jesus is healing. We saw him cast out devils. He's about to heal now. And he came and took her by the hand. I love Jesus. And lifted her up. And how, may, how long? Immediately. Immediately. Do you know if Jesus did not touch her, she would remain like that. And you would think it's the will of God. Don't trivialize an anointed hand. Goodness. Jesus walks in and says, I'm introducing something to this woman's body. That until the arrival of that thing, the condition does not change. That contact. The Bible says immediately the fever did what? That means the fever was a living thing. It could move. Abba, is it, are you not intelligent people? The fever left. Pastor Alpha left me. Before Jesus came, the fever was with her. They gave it all kinds of interpretation. Jesus, look at what Jesus did. He didn't talk. He just touched. The Bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak. Just by making contact alone are you seeing that now some it was about the transference of virtue and it forced the spirit there was a separation that means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you are you getting what i'm saying now yes that means that growth that swelling is a sign that there is something with you ah but the hands of jesus extended through us you see that I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you that means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body and just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go there is an agency that will separate you from that pile you will call it a miracle there is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated look at it immediately not slowly so the question is not whether you can be healed the question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit because when it happens the bible says immediately and she was so healed she went straight to the kitchen straight to the kitchen from a bed and he came and took her by the hand and brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set, like Koinonia now, they brought unto him. That means there was an information that had reached town. That when we bring certain people to this man, there was something about him that was able to heal them. They brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. See the kind of people that came to Jesus. As a man of God, if these kinds of people are not coming to you, it's not the issue of I'm not called into this ministry. Something is wrong. Because they should discern 
that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are, there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick, but let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, Joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her. Something made that uncle call, brothers and sisters. Because that uncle also has relatives somewhere. Everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him. What makes him to leave them and come to you? No. Are we blessed? One question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray. Are you truly tired of the situation? You see, there's something I think I was sharing with. I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people see your sister, allow that pain, don't stop it. Because there are people, if you have not been pushed to the wall, you will not see the need for God. For as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you, you will not see the need to be serious. So sometimes God deliberately allows it. And that pain, the day five of your children said, Daddy, is this how we'll continue? You just get up and say, I'm coming for Koinonia today. I'm, I'm tired of this. That pain was an indication that something is wrong. And that it needs remedy fast. Pain. There are people who will never run and come to God. But you just press one side of your stomach and you just felt, ah, something is growing. What is this? Next week, the thing increased. You told a doctor, just touch it and say, ah, I don't want to tell you the name. Pain. Just say, when is that miracle service said? The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life tonight. Do you believe it? I expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils, listen carefully, I expect that tonight, by his spirit, he will lift you out of certain captivities, lack of favor, delay. There are some of us who are trusting God to return certain things that left your life for years. Whoever told you it cannot, you heard the lady that said they stole her phone, they came with matchet and stole her phone. I remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a matchet. Foolish thieves. They don't know that a body without a spirit is dead. The same way you have been carrying a certificate, that's the body. Where is the spirit component? That's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin. But when the spirit component comes, let me tell you this. God never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted. A spirit entity must assist you. Even you, if you meet a herbalist, that herbalist is not alone. There is a spirit assisting him. You see that? Yes. Don't walk through life by your strength and power. Please help them. Life will be too hard for you. Is, is the mystery of hardship. Rejecting the assistance of the spirit. I would dare not do ministry without the spirit. What else will I be doing? Hmm. But with God. With God. All things. Without him. You are on your own. But when you involve him. And not only involve him. Go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder. I'm showing you, many of you are surprised. The same surprise was in the Bible. They were astonished. What manner of man is this? Astonished. 
and then the man if he's wise will tell you look i'm not alone jesus said i'm not alone all these miracles you see i'm being assisted brothers and sisters the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance the realm of the spirit is in partnership you can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside shouting at overflow no no Haba. words are not hammer but when the spirit is upon them that word will enter you like a drug and all of a sudden you will find out that certain things will go <laughs> it will work in zaria it will work in lagos it will work in london it will work in saudi arabia it will work everywhere are we together the spirits that oppress us must give way I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive the most important thing is not the ministrations as it were the most important thing is creating this expectation many of us come and we are just hoping um, okay God I know you will bless me in the name of Jesus may God lift you amen I just, well, it was a nice service and you go back and nothing happens you keep watching people come to testify blessed is she that believes the Bible says for unto her not unto them there shall be a performance hallelujah I believe the Lord I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart you are sick get ready to be healed don't 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 say well let's watch and see get ready to be healed you are oppressed of the devil you may not even know you're oppressed you just know that nothing is working in your life I want you to be tired and say God will you bring me here so especially for those of you who came so far lord will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that there are some of you in ministry you came to contact fire lord will you leave me will i leave my members my fellowship and come back here and go back no evidence of favor i believe him i believe that he's a mighty man i believe he's awesome i have seen his hand I have seen his power and ladies and gentlemen i present to you the same god yesterday today forever i present to you the same healer yesterday today forever i present to you the same deliverer i present to you the one who took joseph from the prison overnight i present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle. I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus. I present to you your destiny changer. I present to you your destiny maker. I present to you the anointer of men. The one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life. I present to you the prosperer the one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child. I present to you the one who can give you influence, can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder, a specimen, an epistle of his hand. That's the God I present to you. I have given a very nice speech we're about to step back and allow the king of glory ride over this place and let me watch the mountain that stands before him let me watch Zerubbabel or oh, no no he said who art thou mountain who art thou mountain who art thou infirmity who art thou delay who art thou stagnation before Zerubbabel he said before Zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain Lift your hands, I want to pray. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. 
there is an impartation of the grace for favor this is what the Lord is telling me the grace for favor the grace I'm about to pray for favor favor is a revelation that God has given me my life is a testimony of that reality I want to pray for you now believe believe as I pray I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus I decree and declare right now father even as you have revealed to me from this main auditorium to overflow one overflow two overflow three and those online lord i release an impartation for the grace for favor receive it right now in the name of jesus receive that grace in the name of jesus receive that grace in the name of jesus i stretch my right hand and i decree and declare step into a new level of favor 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 we need favor in our lives most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve i say it again in the name of Jesus every challenge in your life that only the favor of God can solve I stand before the God who has helped me and has helped this ministry I release upon you an oil of favor take it now in the name of Jesus take favor take favor receive favor in the name of Jesus Christ a strange dimension of favor favor that will surprise you favor that will accelerate your life when a life listen to me when a life has no favor it is clear the proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life not the absence of money you can have money you can have intellect you can have a job but when there are no men in your life you don't have favor the proof of favor is not the coming of money the proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that the men that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor I prophesy them upon you now I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business upon your job upon your projects may men arise to help you hallelujah hallelujah there is the grace for favor those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while i traveled to lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going listen carefully something is happening here a young man just walked to me and held me and i looked at him and he said sir remember me I said well i don't remember you what's the story he came here koinonia with a property his property and carried it and gave me as a seed i said what for i mean you're a young man what will you go and tell your wife brothers and sisters from november till now nine properties and one estate came to him a young guy Abba. is it charm what is on you is what brings things to your life it's not what you want it is what is on you in the name of jesus that anointing that must come on you i declare that it comes on your head right now it comes upon your head right now producing strange results it comes upon your head right now it comes upon your head
it right now. Just follow me. Some of you don't know how you need favor. You know you need favor, but you don't know what extent. I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor. You will never be able to be happy on earth. No. I can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria not London Zaria here many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you nobody thinks about you God does not talk to anybody about you a gentleman I think one of these uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays and he stood to see me after the service and he said man of God my life is hard can you help me with some money and I looked at him I said you are not a wise gentleman I know you need money now but you should ask yourself the person giving you the money where did it come from the wiser prayer is for favor I said let's do an experiment I told him I said I will pray for you for favor return next Friday and tell me what happened if nothing happens I will give you money agreed he said yes and I prayed for him and he went brothers and sisters on Monday Monday that's the Monday after that gentleman sent me a text and he said his uncle that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money i said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you enough to see that you rise it takes favor can I pray that prayer for you again in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God you have done your best you have done your efforts you have struggled it's almost killing you now receive the grace for favor receive the grace for favor May your life change by favor. Receive the grace for favor. Hallelujah. It is favor that brings resources. It is favor that brings opportunity. There are many gifted people. There's no one to reward them. There are many nice people, many wonderful musicians, nobody to place a demand on their grace. It's so annoying when you see someone you are better than, but he has favor and you don't. And yet you have to say yes, sir. Her man did not think Mordecai was good enough, but favor. And he said, everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai, bow the knee, Mordecai is passing. Yes, a gatekeeper. You may not like a person, but when favor is on them, it will veto whatever you think. I pray for you again. Every door that must open in this season to validate favor, I command it to be open now. I command it to be open now. Listen. You're not going to build a house by savings let me tell you the truth it's not in today's nigeria you are not going to buy a car by saving no I practice all these things you are not going to to settle and train your children just by saving money you will need a grace that can accelerate your results otherwise you will never be a giver you will never you can't be a giver just by saving peanuts 10 naira and 100 naira when there is a demand life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor you will be frustrated and that's how satan wants to trap men he would 
trap you and make your life miserable let's release this favor on our families you have received it for yourself but let it get to your family i pray for you in the name of jesus christ my father every family that is represented here by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be a release of favor let there be a release of favor favor on every family favor on every family listen sometimes eh, it is not warfare that destroys it is even how favor works favor can kill to make sure that one person rises some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make ghosts and say for as long as we are there you must route your success through us if you attempt to rise without us you will not rise i declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be god in that family hallelujah favor in one minute i want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak lift your voice begin to pray begin to pray participate lord i release favor concerning this job pray i release favor i release favor favor concerning my building project a shield. You surround us with favor like a shield. Listen, let me tell you the truth. You see, Ba, this prayer you are praying, if this prayer is truly answered in your life, this is how you will stand. What is this? This favor prayer you see, there are people who have touched up this favor. They can tell you, favor is fearful in its operation. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey, Jimmy, I want to give you water what, that's just goodness favor is I want to keep blessing you I want to continue doing this many of us what happens is that we're mistaking goodness for favor someone just appear once and just says look i want to help you and it never happens again when it is favor a process is ignited it keeps following like that it's true study the things in your life you'll be able to separate goodness from favor there are things that just happen one time but favor favor continues so i'm seeing fire on my hands and I want to pray because the Lord wants to bless the works of our hands. Listen, whether you are on a job or whatever it is, you see, these hands you see, they are, it's a mystery. It says, the, the hand of God, it was with this hand God made man. Are we together now? This hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray i'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray 
because for many of us we are getting results but our results are too small I stretch these hands the fire that the Lord put upon this hand in the name of Jesus I release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in I release I stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ you go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does God do these things to give us rest so we can serve him why does God open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from Satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things you never will truly be able to seek God when certain things have not been solved in your life it's true you can't give God your best when you are still thinking of what to eat you are thinking of what to wear but when God takes those things away your prayer life becomes worship not just hours of petition in the flesh hallelujah hallelujah overflow two there's someone the anointing of the spirit is coming on someone overflow two the overflow by the roadside bring the lady hello him Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done Overflow to the overflow by the road. Please quickly, we have to hurry up. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him There is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him Thy kingdom come. Thy will be. The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. The devil has put something in this lady's stomach. This lady you are holding. I command in the name of Jesus, remove that evil you have put now. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
I'm about to pray and I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen. There will be such a massive, massive, massive deliverance. Now, let it not surprise you. I've explained to you what this thing is. It's a separation. You should rejoice when it happens because it means that you are entering a new season. A new season. A new season. A new season. Let them go now. 
witchcraft manipulations of darkness in the name of Jesus I command a separation through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit I decree I set it as an ordinance in the spirit I announce liberty liberty bring them out Jesus Christ if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural whether the earth whether fire that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three I command those ordinances set on fire one two three let there be liberation right now every family Covenanted to the waters, covenanted to the air, to trees. I set you free now. a map and I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the spirit going to or your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty complete liberty Overflow three, please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow three. Don't worry, you you that you you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow three. Just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. At the count of three, overflow three. I want you to shout the name Jesus because I'm seeing swords. That's what I'm seeing, and the Lord is bringing a massive, massive breakthrough massive deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus overflow three are you ready I'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you right now in the name of Jesus everyone under any kind of oppression at the count of three shout Jesus one two three Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. Hold on guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, I want to pray. The Lord is showing me something that is very interesting. The Lord wants to break cycles. There are people, every season, certain things happen. Every September, somebody must die. Every three, three years, somebody married must divorce. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. You don't have to ask whether or not you are involved. Don't worry, the anointing will look for you. I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus, the power that activates cycles, demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns 
and events keep repeating themselves in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear God is not done with you I look at you and I see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if I don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I command that devil let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout Jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what God will do one two get ready three the chain of circles be broken cycles cycles of failure cycles of miscarriages cycles of unfruitfulness by the sound of the spirit be broken now hallelujah be broken now I want to pray um, please this man I don't know who the this man yes please quickly we are soon going to pray for the sick I may not have time to prophesy to individuals I'm standing near this lady and I'm seeing a snake this is what I see in the name of Jesus I curse that devil I'm not seeing a human being I'm seeing a snake in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ overflow one I'm seeing the power of God this I just mentioned snake and I was seeing serpents just moving at overflow one right now I'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes that's what I'm seeing it's happening to people at overflow one in the name of Jesus let it be over now snakes and scorpions the mystery the mystery of snakes and scorpions he said I give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy sir I want to pray for you I don't know whether you came here for us you have been but, coming here uh, but I was tra I travel before that so I have not been coming I want to pray for you yes, sir. if I don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you I'm not a prophet of doom I want to pray for you you love Jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you huh? yes, uh, is that true yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you yes, sir. that thing is a charm yes, sir. it's not half it's charm yes, native yes, doctor yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. that's what will even kill you yes, sir. it's not going to solve your problem yes, sir. the people doing it are well meaning yes, sir. but the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you sir because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it yes, and you violate it will destroy you yes, sir. can I pray for you you have you have taken something in your system now that will even destroy you listen let me tell you when you are pressed we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall going to the devil to get a charm is is you are facilitating your destruction if satan gives you tea here he will hold a knife and stab you at the back father by the mercy of god i pray for this man let him not die in the name of Jesus I close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of Jesus both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms in the name of Jesus we scatter that shrine into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you sir the Lord perfects you in Jesus name I pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting I'm looking at her and I'm seeing something. Agnes. God is not done with that guy or that young man with bloom. Please, if you are not Agnes, don't come here. Please. Your name is Agnes. Where are you from? I need to pray for you I'm seeing an attack on your life
this attack is coming from Calabar. Huh? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sir. I have to pray for you. Where are you from? Cross River. You are from Cross River? Yes, sir. Come. I must pray for you. Kai. There is somebody, the Lord is setting the person free. I'm seeing a friend going to a harbor list and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person. You are here now. In the name that is above all names. I'm serious. Don't think I'm just hyping you. In the name of Jesus, whoever's name has been written by any demonic friend or whatever harbor list, in the name of Jesus, because that person you keep seeing dead dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit now I'm going to pray for you and then we are going to pray for the sick right now ah, there is some serious deliverance I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit this is this is this is a serious Father, let this lady be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, you, this lady, come. You love Jesus? Huh? Yes, sir. Come. You, I, I'm not condemning you, eh? Look at me. You have to be very serious with God. One, two, friends. Look at me. God has delivered you many times. You would have destroyed yourself. Huh? You're a small girl. You need to love God with all your heart. Please, be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you i love you eh? i love you and that's why i'm telling you this you need you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up hmm? i'm not going to say everything i'm seeing but you have to be careful because it's god that saved you now i'm seeing something a virus anyway in the name of jesus christ father i pray for your daughter help her by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ 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 I'm standing and I'm seeing a tree and that tree is this lady and something that was planted and the Lord is saying uproot it I uproot this thing now in the name of Jesus Christ I uproot it now the Spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State I've never been there physically, but I'm seeing Benway, Benway, and I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down. It's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family involved in this, Sheketos Kotopakariakata, I command and uproot him. Every tree that has not been planted, help them by my father. Every tree I see Benway State. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you, my dear. You are a nice lady, but there's bad luck in your life. Very bad luck. And the Lord wants to help you. Father, help your daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bad luck be gone. Now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord help you. Come my dear, let me pray for you. I'm about to pray for the sick now. Our time is gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are some... My spirit is heavy to prophesy. But because we have to... I want us to pray for the sick so that i can just make those declarations we may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy but i'm telling you god wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear i want to pray for you in jesus name the lord is rolling away the reproach in your family rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what I'm praying for you for. I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that is a new level of lifting you. This lady looking at me. I prophesy it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Who is this? Who? Agnes. Agnes, where is she? Abuja. Abuja, sir. Your sister? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this lady. Where is she? Abuja, sir. She loves Jesus. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her. Eh? In the name of is she married? Huh? In no. the name of uh, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus Christ. May God help you. Mama, come. Let me pray for you. It's your season of breakthrough. Come. Is this your child? Come. Boy, come. I'm looking at this boy and I'm seeing that God is going to use him. This is a small boy. Boy, how are you? The, the boy doesn't even know. But I'm going to pray for him. Samuel did not know that he would become a great prophet one day. When Eli, he was just an innocent boy. I'm going to pray for him. Mama, please stand up. I will pray for you. Look at me, ma. Please don't be embarrassed. But the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life. This thing they call in house, Wahala. God wants to take it from your life. You are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord, but this, this cause of hardship. Um, this woman loves the Lord with all her heart. Father, you, what's, what's the name of this boy? Riba. Huh? Lifted. Okay. Your name is Lifted? Yes. Father, I lay hands on Lifted. In the name of Jesus Christ, use him mightily. We are all products of your grace. Lift him and use him mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you this. The month of April is your month of strange breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ. The month of April is your month of breakthrough. Azuka, come. Lift the camera first. Let me pray for you and then you keep the camera. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing a big project coming for you. And this project is going to lift you. This is something that has to do with your snapshot. But God is bringing someone. It's been something you have desired that God will bring someone to open a door. And truth, you have been faithful. You have even been serving in this house. But I want to pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, lift him. Take him to that dimension of grace. I release that anointing upon you. It will no longer be an ordinary camera. I call forth men that will lift you i command it so i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ open doors for you open doors for you in the name of jesus christ come this lady um sarah come there is witchcraft in your family i have to pray for you this thing is affecting everybody in the family everybody everybody not there's no exception everybody lord Take away this plague of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. Wonderful people, beautiful ladies, but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell. Jeketos kata bakaria kato zibranda kata. Jebros katos kede katambria kata. In the name of Jesus Christ, I silence the voice of the accuser. I silence the voice of the accuser. I silence the voice of the accuser. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick now. Listen, I know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting God for healing and miracle. Let me pray for this lady. How many of you have your prayer request? Now lift it up, ushers, your prayer request. Those online, make sure we collect it. This, this lady, let me have her hands. Lord Jesus, let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold her gently she'll be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick don't allow any nonsense remain in your body no matter how small make sure you insist that it leaves make sure you insist that it leaves we are going to be very fast please we'll be very fast now let me say this when you stand to receive healing, don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping. Let your heart be open. Are we together? Number two, accept 
whoever is praying for you ask you what is wrong you don't have to say okay it is my ears or my don't worry don't worry the people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch it doesn't matter what auditorium it's a corporate grace that is working here hallelujah and for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening make sure you are praying because I'm, I'm literally sensing as if I want to throw up. It's the spirit of prophecy. There's, there's something that the Lord is putting in my spirit to release. And that's why I want to pray for the sick quickly. So that we will pray this prophecy. If we do this, I'm satisfied in this service. We have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time. Hallelujah. Jesus, someone please help with collecting the request. Make sure that even those at the extremes of the road their requests are collected please everybody father in the name of jesus we pray by the ministry of the spirit several people serving as contact points but we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick lord your people have come some of them with incurable diseases some of them with all kinds of devils i decree and declare that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying thank you jesus my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make me just like you my beautifier you have taken away The pain. Away the pain, make me just like you. Me just like oh, my beautiful, my beautiful, you are taking away, taking away the shame, taking away the pain, taking away the pain. Make me just like you. He 
this nation in the name of Jesus Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer so Lord I transfer the trust of your people to you 
the one who is able to meet every need and on the strength of the grace that only comes from you and in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the resurrected lamb the one who is most victorious I prophesy and I turn every request here to become a testimony in the name of Jesus Lord as I walk through these requests in the name of Jesus that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge every challenge every challenge no matter what it is I decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released in the mighty name of Jesus Christ listen to me no matter what it is no matter what it is provided it found its way here in the name of Jesus Christ the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony there are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered may they lack the sleep there are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered may they be promoted there are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered may they be laid to rest in the name of Jesus Christ let's pray if they are still praying for you in any of the overflows don't worry you can just connect with them while I pray for you by the grace of God you will not write your request twice I thought I was done but I just felt drawn again to it whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere may the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you as long as God grants me the grace I will never stop prophesying over you it is the greatest thing I think I can do if I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God I may not be able to accurately address everyone but when it comes to prophecy everyone can receive are we together now wherever you are you can receive you've heard the testimonies you've seen the things that happen the Bible says everyone who speaks let him speak according to the measure of grace there are some things this anointing can do and let's trust God that it happens in your life let's pray lift your hands father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already that from January February you've not known joy I declare that as this week ends that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too the Bible says no weeping endures for a night it says but joy comes with the morning I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say Lord I've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the God I serve release it to you anyone here jobless or trusting God for a better job in the name of Jesus between now and March miracle service return with your miracle job Return with your miracle job. Return with your miracle job. Anyone here due for promotion and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is, you've been kept at a level. In the name of Jesus, I open the doors for you. Rise to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every manifestation of delay in your life others move forward but when it gets to your turn 
something just clamps you in one position or slow progress slow progress is as destructive as delay i command speed to your life i speak speed to your life i prophesy speed to your life in the mighty name of jesus christ i decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life in the name of jesus this is the season where all those doors are closed forever i pray for those in business here i speak over it the grace for multiplication let it come upon your business in the name of jesus christ i pray for those who are trusting god to correct certain things in their lives it may be results for students it may be something it may be a mistake of the past you've seen god correct things in strange ways here i command supernatural correction for you for every student here that the result you are holding is not your real result i don't care how long in the name of jesus the son of the living god we correct it right here a balance so we have an assignment to extend the culture when promise was you know talking to us i'm sure some of you were shocked looking at him you cannot imagine that a gentleman like this was keeping dreadlocks and wearing earrings all around when he came to zaria you think he just wanted to wear it he was reacting to something within him somebody told him that appearance or that state was equal to manhood and masculinity and so he was a victim of his mindset what happened to him not just deliverance but what happened to him was a translation another idea an alternative structure came upon his life see you don't change people by just flogging them insulting them castigating them or telling them do this when you tell somebody do this the person will not do it he's reacting to something within him if you don't change that's why they bring people out of prison and they say make sure you don't steal again and you see the person standing they say sign here and he's signing one month later they say ah they say honestly this time around this and that and that because they they don't create programs that influence the minds of the people you cast away that spirit and change their paradigm and then you win them amen let me discuss our mandate and the 21st century i really want this to be relevant to us the mandate of the church i think one of the confusion in the church right now is how to be able to weave kingdom living and the reality of our changing society whether you believe it or not times are changing say times are changing the only constant thing in life is change the 21st century has brought in a lot of changes a lot of changes changes in the way even some of us who are young met certain things that we can even relate to and say ah things have changed we're not so old like that but at least we can look back and be able to say yesterday there was xyz today is, is now obsolete not to talk of our parents and our fathers and mothers here they can tell you a lot of things we have no idea some of our little ones here don't know what a typewriter looks like some of them when they grow i'm sure they'll not even know what a stove looks like i'm sure by the time they are adults will be using e-cookers <laughs> oh don't limit the mind of man believe me who knew that somebody will create something as as much as i mean hundreds of tons and then lift it up in the air just like that even you you can't hang in the air yet plane that is heavier than you can rise up in the air so don't don't trivialize the power of the mind cultures have changed 
the interests of people have changed perspectives have changed technology has changed a lot of things technology has changed our appetites the world right now is only hours away from anywhere anywhere hours away i'm sure that in the in the next future or in the next uh, maybe five ten years i'm sure you may not have to dial numbers to call them again they will program them to work with your mind i just think of nas and his phone beeps it can happen i mean there's artificial intelligence in phones phones can feel phones can record they can have memories so the 21st century is here and what is the attitude as far as our mandate is concerned because the old ways of doing things even as far as kingdom advancement will no longer be effective i think it was school of ministry again i was telling them did you know that right now you can stand near an influential man's daughter attempting to preach to her they can just snap you and in five minutes the police are coming to catch you and they'll say you are harassing her are we together now you are harassing her so the world the world is is gradually strangling the opportunities the access points we have to reach people and we must be able to reinvent ourselves by the spirit of god to adjust to the change and yet be effective in communicating our mandate is god blessing us one of the tragic things about the metamorphosis of the church with respect to the current change is that most of the change that is being effected in the church is not effected with the authority and the supervision of the holy spirit let me tell you what happens when you try to adjust to the 21st century outside of the holy spirit you will become something else completely something else there are pastors under pressure to turn their churches to align to the 21st century please listen to me there are businessmen there are there are entrepreneurs there are all kinds of people families the the paradigm of fatherhood parenting leadership is being compelled to change to adjust to 21st century living but you see a believer is not just one who is born again a believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom and that your change must be with the holy spirit supervision so that he can tell you which attributes are timeless that will not change and which ones are flexible enough not everything in the christian life is permitted to change there are timeless things there are components of the believer's life that must remain constant and i'll tell you where we get this teaching from first corinthians 9 22 please i need to balance this teaching is god blessing us already first corinthians 9 22 this is the bible stand that many contemporary preachers sadly have picked in and we have brought it to seemingly be a strategy now i believe in metamorphosis i'm teaching you change now but that that change must be guided by the wisdom of the holy spirit everyone read this is paul writing to the corinthian church one to read to the weak became as i as weak that i may gain the weak are we together read on i am made all things to all men that i might by all means save some now paul is saying something interesting here let me translate this for you paul is saying i can become anything to anybody this is a nice verse for satan to take advantage of meaning become a smoker to smokers are we together become a prostitute to prostitutes to win them that's not what the bible is saying but that's what has happened in many churches in our obsession to metamorphose and become relevant in the 21st century we have been misguided by this scripture and many things that happen there are churches where members vote the sermon for the week that the pastor preaches are we together there are churches where all kinds of things happen now i don't insult these people at least they are serving god but that's that's dangerous we are removing certain ancient landmarks so as i attempt to teach us on that's why i call this strategic kingdom influence not just kingdom influence it must be strategic meaning the holy spirit is involved 
Hallelujah. The idea, listen, the idea of Paul here is that I am able to make adjustments. The idea here is not an idea about leaving your convictions. It's an idea of making adjustments. The summary of this entire communication is that Paul is saying, because of the reality of my society, I am able to make adjustments. Listen, any church, any pastor that cannot adjust should be ready for empty pews. I repeat, any pastor, any businessman, any CEO, any worker that cannot adjust. Notice, I didn't say leave your convictions. Adjust means to create allowance for the excesses of people. Adjust means to create allowance for the limitations of people. Adjust means to create allowance for the perspectives of people. When you become rigid and stringent, forget about advancing the kingdom in today's world. One of our fathers who has done that most remarkably, that is a model for all of us, is Papa Ie Adeboe. I've studied the redeemed Christian church very carefully and what had been the secret of their exponential growth and influence. I will tell you, the key is this flexibility not compromise there is a difference between compromise and flexibility papa Iya deboe is a man of strong convictions he's very conservative in his approach to christianity alongside his wife but he realized that if i must achieve the mandate of seeing every redeemed church or at least in every two or three houses let there be one redeemed member i must be flexible enough and yet uncompromising the key is to maintain your convictions but give allowance for the conviction of others let them be able to find a place in your vision and so you see that it began to open up different models of redeemed branches and so you can see a redeemed branch that is generally conservative still adhering to the foundational tenets and you can see one that is quite modern in fact very modern you may not know that this is redeemed his job as a man of god is to ensure that the central leadership sustain the foundational um, model and the understanding of redeem this is a winning strategy so you can find redeem in france you can find redeemed in um in, in certain places that you would not expect many pastors are unwilling to bend we are stringent on our ideologies and we do not want to create flexibility so the key is that we must be able to make adjustments everybody say adjustment adjustment is one key to strategic kingdom advancement you cannot say I cover my hair I don't I don't believe in wearing trousers for instance or living here and you say any other person i come across who i see with trousers or hair not covered is a devil i tear the person down you are going to be frustrated at the same time nobody should put pressure on you to influence your convictions unnecessarily you have a right to sustain your convictions but at the same time you must be able to give room are we together now I'm teaching us on our mandate and the 21st century. I've gone to minister in several places. And um, when you go to minister in places, you'll be amazed the approach of many people. I've gone to ministries that are very conservative. Very, very conservative. I've gone to other ministries that are generally charismatic and unorthodox. I've gone to ministries that are wild. I've gone to ministries that are lawless. That one is not charismatism, it's lawlessness. Yet, in the midst of it, I have been able to make adjustment without violating my convictions. Are we together? Koinonia runs on certain convictions. But part of the reason why God has blessed us is because we have been able to make adjustments. Are we together now? Adjustments that can allow people to, to come in 
and be able to not necessarily incorporate their ideologies but give them space to know God for themselves and in that knowing God many people begin to adjust not by force but on the strength of the information that is coming to them is God blessing us yeah. you cannot win people you resent you cannot stand and all of a sudden you see a lady with heavy makeup wearing a very tight trouser and all of that and you know you just give this atmosphere of look at this prostitute and this devil you want to kill me and your idea was to come and win her and then you come and stand and oh you are a sinner you see i will not listen to your message no no no, no. it has nothing to do with being angry i will not listen to your message you come to preach to me for 10 minutes you don't even know what my name is you are initiating me into a cult you are misrepresenting the love of christ at the same time i will not come and see you and you say ah uh, you really want to preach christ to me if prove that you love by coming to my house or coming to this I'm, I'm in the club if you really want to win me come and meet me at the club i won't come go to hell are we together there is a balance so that we don't begin to do stupid things there are ladies that have entered relationship you ask them why they say i'm on a code and you are not sss that's 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 too costly you say i entered relationship it's not love or i don't love him ask him i i am passionate about souls you are getting it wrong i'm trying to explain this scripture i become all things to all men does not mean i leave my convictions to turn into everything no whether you are wearing jeans or suit you are a christian and being a christian is is exact there's no confusion about it christianity is not buddhism there are exact tenets there are exact foundational convictions write this down we must carefully study the word please let's write let's hurry up we must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance we must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance listen the key to kingdom advancement is found in the bible timeless secrets that can advance the kingdom through any culture any kind of civilization and when we study the bible we will find therein secrets that can survive any kind of sociological metamorphosis it doesn't matter what dispensation the truths there remain timeless keys to kingdom influence let's discuss now keys to kingdom influence Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Sing it one more time. Ask and now give the nations to you. Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Keys to kingdom influence. Listen, I've told us that the key to strategic kingdom advancement is called influence 
the new kind of evangelism that will break through any protocol and any hardness is called influence evangelism the advocacy that comes when a man can gain a platform and is able to influence the convictions of people never trivialize influence and its effect to a person a territory a people and a civilization at every point in your life you are being influenced by somebody and you are influencing somebody keys are very important in the kingdom you hear jesus speak again about keys and i will give you the keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws and the principles that give us access the keys of the kingdom are the mysteries the laws the principles that give us access there are keys to kingdom influence and in the name of the lord jesus christ i'm praying that as i begin to teach this as you embrace it you will step into a level of influence that will surprise you the lord spoke to us and said this is a year of multiplied grace and influence he expects us to do more and he's guiding us on how to get there number one the first key to strategic kingdom influence is to have a pace setting trailblazing global mentality write it the way i said it don't write your idea pace setting comma i took time to write it this way it's supposed to create an effect don't scatter it pace setting comma trailblazing comma global mentality write it and look at me let's cane out certain mediocrities in our mind we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days mm. we're on our way to better days hold on pace setting trailblazing global mentality see we many of us are still growing and we're still coming into the comprehension of how low and depraved our thinking and our ideology is as marketed to us by our institutions as marketed to us by our upbringing as marketed to us by our christian advocates our pastors we are largely victims of the thinking of a man who have sat under for many years our approach the approach of the average christian is not global the approach of the average christian is not pace setting we are comfortable with mediocrity yet we want to command influence a music artist no global mentality no pace setting mentality so we are comfortable borrowing anything from anywhere not yielding to the spirit of creativity that will launch us into unimaginable feats there are many of us seated here who can do so much for god but our mindsets are small i have challenged the leaders again and again koinonia is an apostolic ministry this is only an, a local platform for us to meet together but the approach is global the approach is, is way beyond Nigeria and Africa. You see, we must be able to excel. Let's look at a few scriptures. Matthew 5, 14. Then Deuteronomy 6, 2 to 3. Media, you have to help us. We really have to be fast. Jesus said this, Matthew 5, 14. Write it down and please look up. One, two, read. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The second statement explains the first line. It says you are the light of the world. Then it compares you. It says you are a city. In other words, can a city that is set on a hill be hidden? 
global approach to life we start up businesses with no idea of global approach the average business in nigeria if it lasts 10 years is a miracle 15 years is a wonder we don't think far right the average church do you know how many churches start in january and by december they are dead because the way the pastor started and was running you would think rapture will happen tomorrow and he runs no no sense of leadership no pace setter trailblazer mentality we come into a system and do the exact same thing listen listen there is a difference between a manager and a leader a manager maintains status quo a leader breaks new frontiers a true apostolic spirit is a groundbreaking spirit you cannot be under a ministry like this and then your thinking is still old Daniel 6 verse 2 to 3 pace setting mentality hallelujah this was the story of Daniel look up please let's see the kind of mindset Daniel had it's not just that he was called Daniel he reigned over certain provinces the Bible says and over these three presidents sorry I'm cutting from verse 1 of whom daniel was what please read it of whom daniel was first means a pace setter first means a leader surpassing ordinary standards he said that the princes might give accounts to them and the kings should have no damage verse 3 then this daniel was what everybody say pace setters this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Why? Because an excellent spirit. Was it because he was a Christian? Because he possessed certain things that made him irresistible. And the king thought to set him over what? Influence as a result of a pace setting mentality. How many Christians start their work and never dream of becoming the managers or the people at the highest echelons? They don't care. In fact, they run away. When they tell them they are considering you for promotion, they say, ah, but for what now? How about God? Is it that you don't know what? It's a demonic mentality. Whoever taught you that, is, it, it may be a sincere person, but that's a doctrine of demons that keeps the church bad. I love Jesus. When Jesus showed up, he broke status quo. Genesis 41, give us 33, then we move to 38 to 44. Please, very fast. Sorry, we have to read these things because I want to press something in tonight. Genesis 41, give us verse 33, then we we'll move to 38 down to 44. Now look up, please, everyone. This was the story of Joseph. Now, therefore, this is Joseph, advising pharaoh now therefore look out for a man discreet and wise whoever qualifies whoever has that mentality give him this kind of influence set him over the land of egypt there is influence for the taking but there is a requirement who is that one man in egypt who has sustained a paradigm of thinking that can produce this result give us verse 38 hear what the king says in response and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. May that be your testimony. Amen. That even your enemies will sit together and say, Let's tell ourselves the truth. Can we find a trailblazer? That when the government wants to sow a seed as a government to a church, they turn and say, Which, which church is making impact that is consistent with the values of the government? Can we find such a one as this is? A man of whom the Spirit of God is. We're reading down to 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Listen, for as much as God has showed thee this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. 
Watch how cheap influence becomes. Thou shalt do what? I give you influence instantly. Thou shalt be over my house. I hope you know Pharaoh knew that Joseph was not an Egyptian. There are certain levels of mentality you have that will veto your background. All this issue of we don't accept people from this state. They've not found an exceptional person. That's why. That's when you see them breaking the rule. They will say this is the first time we are doing it. Say that's that, I'm, a, I'm a first timer. I have, I have the spirit of breaking new grounds. Thou shalt be over my house. And according to my word shall all thy word shall all the people be ruled can you imagine that's a costly that's a risk from pharaoh he says only in the throne will i be greater than thou and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over how many all the land of egypt do you think that's good for the kingdom do you think Joseph's father and brothers would have been allowed to come to Egypt if he didn't have influence. Are we together now? Can you see the advantages of his influence? His influence afforded him to say, where's my father? The same way when you have influence, you can look at somebody and say, you said you are looking for a job, please come. I know you. Your being in Koinonia has qualified you. Even if you don't know anything, I know you love God and you can listen. We have preached people. We have, we have destroyed opportunities for the church to rise. Because of mentalities that we think are good. The church is almost an endangered species compared to the world's global brand in terms of advancement. We are there smiling, throwing ourselves under the anointing and then the world is, is gaining, is squeezing the church into a mold. And one policy can just write us away. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of royalty, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land. Shout influence. influence. Say it again. Influence. In our families, there's nobody to speak for us. When we are suffering, we just call on God directly. And God wants to answer, but there is no envoy, no human being that can partner with God to wipe our tears do you know it's a cause to have generations of people with no influential person in that family you hear people here say i'm the first person to go to school i'm the first person to get a job you know the danger every other person surrounds you like worms drawing from you you are earning hundred thousand and there are 22 people waiting and hoping to receive their share of cake from you leadership is the passion to excel when i talk of leadership i don't just mean ruling leadership in terms of excelling the passion to excel at an uncommon level i'm explaining to you what pace setting trailblazing global mentality is in one word is leadership the passion to excel at an uncommon level so as to gain access over that sphere listen the reason why you excel is so that you can rise to the highest level and then be able to gain access. We need men and women who have access. And I tell you, Koinonia, hear me. This is what you are becoming. Are we together now? Oh, this is what you are becoming. Just give us time. In the next few years, in the next few years, you know the way if somebody is walking and he says, 
my name is Nas Dangote, even if he's not related to Dangote, that name has already brought favor to his life. I trust God that Koinonia in the future will be, it, it will be like a, a signet ring of favor. I will never pastor and lead people who are failures. We just comfort ourselves. And no, 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 no. A passion to excel. You are in agriculture. You are thinking, how do I lead? Not Kai. How do I get my small one mudu of beans? Me and my wife. She's not even complaining. You are not pace setting. You are not trailblazing. Remember. That if all you want to do is succeed, you are carnal. But if you want to succeed to gain influence and allow God come into that space, you are an ambassador. Always attach a kingdom motivation to your pursuit. And then there is no level of pursuit that will embarrass you. I will never be small. I hate it and it is for the kingdom. Number two. The second key to kingdom influence is character. You want to command kingdom influence. In our generation today, you need character. Everybody say character. What is character? Christ-likeness. Moral uprightness. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 9 talks to us about sustaining kingdom character just write it down we may not have time to look at it listen brothers and sisters please look at me if you want to be global those outside please pay attention if you want to go far in business in ministry in your career you have to curb a lot of excesses in your life. The Bible says, listen to me. The Bible says, um, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. All things are permissible, but not all things are necessary. On your journey to influence, there are weights. Some things are not necessarily sinful. They are just weights. Weights. Character, moral uprightness. From the way you speak, the way you dress, the way you behave. You want to be a leader, you are in a place they are sharing food. Ah, I have not got you. You are just stretching. You are not a leader. God cannot promote you to disgrace him like that. There is a decorum. There is a protocol for great people. I'm not just talking about pretending and, and living a fake and a false life. But you must be disciplined. You are dressing, you iron your clothes. You talk well. You see people, you greet them. You don't see somebody like our daddy here and say, Ah, daddy, how are you, prof? You know, as if you are talking to, to yourself. No. Character. There are many people who do not have character. Moral uprightness. You see an elderly woman moving your mother, something you cannot help her pick up the load. No character. There's this wild nature that our generation of young people have that we must tame and cut away. We, we associate youthfulness to wildness. That means if you are temperate, people think you are too cold. Be wild. You won't be a leader that way. Look at how teachers, the teachers in our school, who teach our students. You see how they dress? You see how they talk? Now, I'm not against anything, but a young man comes, rings in his five hands. I'm not against all of those things, but you are not, it's not seen, but it's a weight. The students are watching you the next day they come with it too you sag your jeans a teacher you see jeans with um, um uh, what they call it all kinds of there's this patch jeans that you see that exposes everywhere i mean there's nothing for the imagination believe me if nobody has told you anything is wrong with it joshua selman is saying it write it mark me something is wrong with that kind of thing you won't go far with it 
I'll preach. Oh. Hallelujah. See, there is a protocol to greatness. You must give up something to go up. You cannot go up with everything you wear with down. It's, it, you are down because a weight held you. If you are ready to move up, be ready to drop some things. Vulgar communications. Don't speak intelligently. Many of us today cannot construct a good letter, a proposal, because our vulgar speaking and communication has destroyed us. You are writing something to apply for a job. You are writing you as you, for as letter four. You see that? I need a job from you. Thanks. And the manager looks at it and says, look at, look at all this nuisance to our company. We have labored to build ourselves and these people are coming to destroy us. See, our generation interprets modesty as weakness. When your life is temperate, you feel guilty for it. Because we live in a generation where you must be loud and wild to be thought of. Those people will not last long. History is full of many of them. Prison cells are full of many of them. They created their own rules to life. Everybody say, I'll be a man of character. Say it, I'll be a man of character or a woman of character. Yes. Every bad wife was a bad human being. Every irresponsible father was an irresponsible human being. Every bad leader was a bad human being. You bring in your personality. You bring in your mindset. It doesn't just change when you become CEO. It's an attitude. Hallelujah. Moral uprightness. You are calm. Not the person moving around, gossiping about everybody, saying everything about everybody. No. Only cheap people do that. Only idle people do that. Hallelujah. There are rules for greatness. You ignore them, you will never be great. The level that God has brought us in ministry by the grace of God. You see all these people inside and outside. I honor God and I bless them. But never make a mistake. They didn't just come just because of the anointing. There are factors combined together. This is what I'm teaching you. See, let me tell you. People never become loyal to you until they probe your life and they are satisfied that you are worth being loyal to. Loyalty is not a gift. You earn it. Are we together? There are so many people who see, especially some of us young people, and they think the loyalty is just because of solidarity. No! Loyalty is a product of a track record. People probe your life and come to a point where they are satisfied with your convictions and they, they, are, they, are, they are comfortable that you are a leader worth submitting to. You don't command influence just because you think you are spiritual. Character. There are many pastors who don't have character. You just get up and go and disturb somebody's house early in the morning. Peace be unto this house. And pastor, so, 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 bang, 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 bang. Madam, is there tea? You think it's a nice thing. They are marking you. You represent boredom to them. No character. Are you anointed? Yes. Will you last like that? No. That's how we inconvenience a lot of people. You now meet somebody and prophesy to the person and say, transfer 7,000 or 10,000 to my account. God keeps quiet and you think he was right. He was very wrong. It's just his mercy that overlooked it. There are pastors who do that. The moment they say, I want to pray for you, what they say is, I want money from you. Moment they pray for you, they just say, transfer 2,000 to my account so that he can activate the faith. There is a place for seed faith. But many of the things we do, that's why a young man right now is associated with the moment parents see certain people, even some of us young ministers, you go to pray in somebody's house and they are already suspecting. They are looking at you. You have to talk for five minutes for them to eat, to loosen up and say, oh, this guy, this guy looks very cultured. 
character you get to somebody's house in five minutes you have entered their kitchen they are prime plantain you carry one you eat the world they are watching you there are some of us like this i must talk to you i want you to become something and we must curb these things don't do that say no 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 we are free they always allow me no see let me tell you part of character is the ability to say no to some things that are even good you must see there are certain things that is like Esau. You are trading your bed right for it. There are times people have carried fat seeds and, and checks, something to give me. And the Holy Spirit will say, no, 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 no. Because in their minds, they are feeling guilty. They are not just blessing me out of conviction. They just feel tall. This man of God has prayed. And you see them, I'm ready to go. And you see them pinching themselves, giving signs. And somebody will enter and they come out. And then I tell them, I say, no, 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 no. I receive it, I bless it, and I sow it back. And it's, ah, man of God, can we have your number, please? Honestly, you see that? You have earned loyalty because you have let them know that you, your convictions are greater than money. For some of us, Abba, you collect and count it and say, Abba, madam, you too. Abba, what is all this? How much is my transport from where I left? I did night vigil, deliverance, the money. You are dropping 10,000, you drop it on the table. There, I say, madam, add something. Are you fake? No, but you are a suspect. It's easy for people to think you went to collect power. Some of us, the way we dress. Uh, now, please, um, don't, 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 don't feel bad. I'm, I'm just trying to work on you. I've seen men of God. Um, please, I'm not, uh, I wish I don't have to preach this, but I have to obey God. From your hairstyle, the way you look, you look like a thief. You look like, I mean, the way you are dressing. And even when you are talking, people are afraid. They are not at ease. Honestly, you may not be, you may be the nicest person available. But something about your lack of character and environment. You tell a lady, I want to see you, she's shaking. Because she doesn't even know what can happen. I want you to be on a project that you must be trusted. Be on a project. Be trustworthy. Not perfection. But you are sincere enough to be trustworthy. When people commit their loyalty to you, it's a trust. You don't disappoint it. How many pastors have dashed down the loyalty of people? Loyalty is a trust, brothers and sisters. So God is talking to some of us now who are careless with little, little things. You just sit down and send a text to four or five sisters. You make jollof rice for me. You, my birthday is coming by June. I want a suit. Sam, you buy uh, this and that. There are men of God that do that. I'm sorry if, if you are in that category, forgive me, but it's wrong. I cannot imagine myself coming now to tell heads of department, all of you bring 100,000. My birthday is coming in June. Choir, you bring, bring, buy me shoe. Uh, all the pastors, <laughs> Pastor Femi and Alpha, and you who have congregations, so you people, you. Ah, ah. God didn't send you to be a burden to the people. Sometimes we do these things sincerely, but I'm telling you now, there is need for adjustment. Don't do that. See, bless the people. And let them bless you based on their perception of who they think you are. They will surprise you. They will surprise you. There is nobody who will have a track record of transformation from your life who will not give back to you. Amen. Let's go to the next point. Some of you don't seem to like this point. The third key to strategic kingdom influence is excellence excellence what is excellence the quality of doing things well the quality of doing things well write this down the difference most times is not what you do but how you do it the difference, brothers and sisters, 
that makes you a great man of influence most times is not what you do is how you do it while i was babbing this this evening i was talking to my baba and i was just telling him that do you know that there are babbing saloons in abuja that you will pay thousands of naira and the people are not as good as him but you will pay because of how they do it the clipper for barbing is different for carving is different there is really nothing there it's just packaging but because of that packaging you will pay for it he was telling me that the, i think it was oga jordan he should be here he went to abuja also and then he went to bab somewhere with his brother and they paid three thousand they gave them wine and chinchin is that what you cannot buy how much is chinchin ten naira how much is this coke this 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 uh, heaven pure heaven wine 250 add it together you paid three thousand and then you watch match but listen it's excellent so you'll be rewarded when you are excellent you name your price you see that what you are doing now are you excellent in it please let me talk to us i salute i know many people in koinonia are engaged actively in all kinds of things but i want to challenge you are you excellent oh you make kunu you think he's small but are you excellent why don't you think of a way of doing it very well don't say kunu is not nice if you make it well i will buy it I think someone in the protocol he has um, some popcorn machines on campus and then i told him i said i want to taste your popcorn let me see what and what do you put there and he was telling me what he said all that one is stories bring it let me taste let me know whether you are excellent see let me tell you something the minimum standard in our world today is excellence even if you don't have the finance to grow into it have the mindset first so you have only one clot and that one cloth will make it look as if you are not excellent you are because already you you've had an ideology of excellence you iron it you look smart it's not doing ministry that makes you excel is how you do it it's not preaching that makes you excel is how you preach it's not doing business that makes customers come to you is how you do it it's not doing your job that makes you excel but how you do it exceptional people most times are not necessarily super skilled people they are just people who have been able to force their value to be recognized excellence say i'll be excellent say it again i'll be excellent number four Give me a few minutes here and we'll pray. Open your spirit and your ears right now to what you're about to hear. <clears throat> the fourth key in our day in the 21st century to strategic kingdom advancement is called results. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. We're on our way to better days. Uncommon results is one of the greatest key, greatest keys to strategic kingdom influence. John 15 verse 8. Listen, I will share with you certain things about results today. That will make you go back to your life and you will insist that i must produce results john 15 verse 8 15 not 5 15 verse 8 okay herein is my father glorified read on that ye bear fruit much fruit exceptional fruit notable results he says so by so doing you will prove that you have been following me diligently listen brothers and sisters our world today thrives on results 
pace setters, influencers are those who command results. Remember my teaching, commanding results. I want you to pay attention right now. Write this down. Uncommon supernatural result is the end of all argument. Uncommon supernatural result is the end of all argument. Creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. Waiting for their manifestation. I tell you, I feel the anointing of the Spirit as I'm talking about this. Something will happen. Something must happen to you tonight. Uncommon result is the end of all arguments. Write this down. Results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles, limitations, and circumstances. Results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles, limitations, and circumstances. Oh, hallelujah. I'm a believer in the word of God. Results listen look at me when you produce results in your life it shows certain things that you have authority you have got the keys that commands authority i told you that the fear of man is the inability to control situations and circumstances there are a number of people that were brought here that are sick this night that's 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 a situation that's a circumstance you hear them say circumstances beyond our control and whoever can bring it under control must command influence Mark Zuckerberg wields tremendous influence because he was able to bring a particular dimension of science under control on common supernatural results are a sign that you truly have authority over circumstances part of the reasons why there are so many people inside and outside is because by the grace of God and with all humility to an extent God has been able to grace us to show that we have sustained certain keys to command consistent control and dominion over certain aspects of life i was in kaduna when we ministered and we were in the restaurant together um, with my people we were just trying to eat have a meal before we rush and come back to zaria and while we were there just trying to order a meal a woman looks at me and um ah the woman was looking at me and now i, I started feeling embarrassed I said, Madam, do I know you? She said, you are Pastor Joshua. I said, yes. She said, ah, well done, sir. And I looked, I said, ah, Madam, how are we? You know, I was playing with her little boy. And I said, where do I know you? And the woman just nodded. She said she was going to tell me a little story. And she said, I came for counseling two years ago, looking as wretched as anything. A single mom with a child, no hope for marriage, finances crashing, everything being destroyed and you prayed for me and you prophesied you told me that they were going to call me back to the job and they would send me to the marketing department and i should go there say man of god that's exactly what happened they sent me to the marketing department and i was i was sad and she did her hand like this i saw a ring she said two months ago i got married even with the child she pointed outside and i saw a clean black e-class she said will you believe that i will be the owner of this brothers and sisters say results one result will end every kind of argument every kind is god speaking to us results pastors produce results produce results you know why our prayer department by the grace of god is like it's like second koinonia it's like midweek service of koinonia for many people because of results they are praying and they are seeing results 
nobody will come and spend two three hours here just like that people are not idiots results by the time your life listen i don't care how much you pray or fast if there is no result you'll be frustrated the end of your work with god is that god ah, you come to a point where you become so full of the anointing of the spirit you can produce some common results fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over sing one time fill me up till i overflow i want to run must have a passion i like you to look at every area of your life and be tired of being barren of results you are a pastor no results no healings no miracles no salvation no transformation and you explain away and say it's because i'm telling the truth people are not coming all those things are flimsy excuses results when a family that is barren comes and there is a miracle that's results there are some results you cannot argue with. No. No. You're a businessman. Don't worry that people don't believe in you. My brother, produce results and you will close the mouth of any and everybody. Even if all you are doing is packing sock away, just produce results. Let me tell you something. It's frustrating to make noise about things you don't have results to show. Because your results are supposed to be your noise in the school of greatness. Not your words. I can do this. I am this and that. No. I can pray. Where is the fruit of the prayer? I can fast. Where is the fruit of the fasting? I am warded. Where is it? Results. You want to command influence in our world today. You need results. You need results. This is the apex of this teaching tonight. You need results. Supernatural results. Write the following things about results. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles let me show you a scripture that would probably really really surprise you give us matthew 14 please let's look at it matthew 14 Mm. Matthew 14 we'll read from verse 23 and um, we'll read down to the end let's hurry up and when he had sent the multitudes away everybody watch this he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come, he was there alone. Rush, media, just continue. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. There was a situation those in the ship could not control. Next verse. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, doing what? Brothers and sisters, the same water, the same water was responding differently to Jesus. The same water. You know why? Because Jesus was operating on certain principles. 
Are we together now? Next verse. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying it is a spirit. Notable results. And they cried out for fear. There is a kind of result that will not only make people celebrate you, they will be afraid. That one will move beyond the realm. I watch some of you as you are sitting down and the power of God begins to break out. I see everybody looking around and you are just trying to adjust, trying to show like I'm, I'm okay, I'm not afraid. There are certain results that can happen in your life. It will make the heart of men fear. But straightway Jesus spake to them saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. He said, Be not afraid, verse 28. And Peter said unto him, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. 29. Mm. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the water, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. 30. This is my verse of emphasis. But when he saw the wind boys terrors, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Look at this. Two people are standing on water. One is sinking, the other one is standing. Was it the water? Never the water. Same Nigeria, same economy, same dollar rise, same everything. Are we together now? Same harshness in ministry, same being in the north where they say people are persecuted. But then you sustain a mystery. Jesus was standing. And when Peter cried, he lifted Peter and Peter stood just like him. Meaning you can bring people to your experience. Listen. There was something Jesus knew that made that water treat him that way. There is something you do not know that is making your life turn around. Someone is walking through it like this. Life is responding to people in different ways on the strength of the laws they have kept. Please hear me. Correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Number two, results are a product of mastery. 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 Exceptional competence. You have mastered the laws that produce them so thorough that you do it unconsciously. That's the kind of attitude that produces results. Number three. Results are a product of diligence. There are many times you keep knocking on the door of destiny until it opens. Sometimes you may knock for many years, but you continue. Diligence and persistence is what separates men from boys. Diligence. Number four. And I want you to leave this, take home this one tonight. Results are a product of the presence of the anointing. Ah! The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. When results become supernatural and consistent, then there's no limit to the influence of the person producing it. When results become notable and consistent, Listen, listen. If you produce results for a short time, it will not create the effect. It needs to be consistent. That's why you find out that God can be using a particular man of God or a church. He can continue for many years. And then one is like he hits a breaking point in the spirit. In one year, he will step into a dimension of increase. Consistency. Consistency. I was watching a video of Steve's Joe, late Steve's Joe, Apple founder, 1991. 1991, he was talking to their team of executives. And if you hear that guy's idea, as at 91, everything he was saying they would do, they did. Men who produce results. Brothers and sisters, if you're part of this ministry, you must produce results, not just receive results, produce results in every area. Hallelujah. When our sister came up and said she got five points, I laughed. But I was impressed with her. But I'm not impressed enough until we find 20 people in a row. That's notable enough. That's the type we can clap with and smile. 
set your standard so high even when they are clapping for you you are still pressing to move higher if you set your standard too low you will hit it easily that's what mediocrity is setting low standards i like her she said four point something when she hit it she set another one you must set a very high standard there is such a high standard that i put in ministry that's why i don't compete because the standard alone i keep competing against that standard is enough to engage me hallelujah i want to get to a point where i will be so full of the holy ghost so full of the anointing of his spirit i'm telling you you don't have to start praying for people it doesn't matter what you are talking about they will pay to get your presence in a place even if it's just to sit down they know they will never be the same fill me up till i overflow i want to run over i want to run over please fill me up till i overflow I want to run. Listen, let me challenge you, everybody here. Create a system that measures your growth. Don't mark your script by yourself and score yourself A and organize speech and price for yourself. You're a mediocre when you do that. Challenge your standard. Don't do small things and rejoice over it. Let me tell you something the key to mediocrity is finding one person you are better than and settling down because of that as a pastor i'm better than this guy as a great i'm better than this guy those kind of people will never be my friends those who come around and start telling you who they are better than no because they are the type who will fight anybody that rises I, i'm not a product of all those kinds of things there is enough the assignment the demand of the assignment is enough you compete against the standard god has given you there is a benchmark those who are men of god today were ushers in the bible welfare personnel look at the condition to be in welfare full of the holy ghost welfare to serve food you needed to serve food with the anointing So we are constantly moving. Thank God for what God is doing through the school of ministry. But we are rising. Thank God for what God is doing through our messages and the media ministry. But we are rising. The result is too small. The result is not yet notable enough. I tell you, compared to where we are going, this is child's play. We've not started anything. The level of excellence is still at its foundation. Foundation. We have not even done anything. That's how you challenge yourself. Don't sit down with your small business and come back with 5,000 and you are laughing and say, Kai, it's better than nothing. Be happy for where you are, but never want to remain here. Oh, what do you do? I'm into interior decor. Are you? See, let me tell you something. Anything you are not competent in, just keep quiet about it. Talking about it will be disgracing yourself. There are so many people around. Ask them, what do you do? They say, I'm into interior decor really like who like what how much can i pay you is there something you can do to me that will make me need you even if i don't like you you have a restaurant can we eat in your restaurant if we have a guest coming can we take the guest to your restaurant and be comfortable i have a church can i come to your church and sit down and be sure that God will bless me. Oh, I'm a driver. Like who? Where do you know? Challenge yourself. Don't mark yourself and say I'm good. There are many talented people inside and outside. Somebody wrote one song and came and sang it for me. I said, my brother, please go and work on it. God is helping you. Don't produce anything from this. Go and work on it. It's obvious you, I can show you at least five rules of music you broke on this. I told them, who is your role model? Who is your inspiration? They say, he mentioned expensive names as if it's just to talk. I said, how many of their videos do you have? Not their videos of the album they produce. Have you watched their stage rehearsals? Have you gone out of your way 
to find out how they rehearse. Listen, you don't learn from a man by watching his real life performance. You watch from a man by learning how he builds. You don't learn from Usain Bolt by seeing how he runs. No, you see how he rehearses. You don't learn from a man of God by just seeing how he displays the anointing. You learn the mystery of his secret place. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. God is taking us far. There are many of us here who would have entered certain levels of influence. Opportunities came and passed us by. He's still passing us by because we have not mastered that key that will give us influence. There are so many people in this place. You are in business. You are the only one who knows you are in business because your products, you don't know nothing about business. You will not sit down and learn. You will not grow. Everybody will be, what are you doing? I'm into real estate. What are you doing? I'm a CEO. CEO of nothing. There's no result. Sit down and learn. Many young people moving around with suit and Bible and, and iPad. What are you? I'm a pastor. My name is Pastor, Pastor David Revelation or David King or something. That's not what will give you open the doors of ministry. Let me tell you something. God knows as a person, I am more than willing to invest into the life of anybody that is serious. And ready to rise up believe me anything you are doing if it's not of standard you see, and you don't get standard by default you learn learn from the best don't learn from your colleagues your colleagues are your colleagues because something made you the same way you rise up you learn something you do not know is the reason why your life is limited something you know but have refused to believe is making you stay. God has given me access or common access to people and sometimes I look at where I am and it's like a dream I'm saying Joshua Selman what are you looking for in this place influence influence whenever you see a man of influence don't be angry it's not mistake results brothers and sisters i'm the firstborn in my family but the way they are even treating me i can't even talk result 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 everybody say result produce result and you will switch the button i'm 20 years i'm 30 years they are still treating me like a child result prove them wrong produce results don't make noise I'm obsessed about studying successful people. I'm not ashamed. I, I have an appetite to confront my ignorance. I confront it with joy and gladness. I confront my ignorance with, with no sense of embarrassment at all. I like knowing what I don't know anything about. When I discover things in my life, I say, ah, this is what I didn't know. I go for that. I want you to produce results. The little level God has brought this ministry is as a result of the results. The level of organization at the little level we are in, there is a formula to it. It's not just happening by mistake. That you come and as many as we are, there is still some level of organization. You don't guess, you learn. What you see today, is what we knew yesterday tomorrow will reveal what we have known today please I'm challenging you. we are going to pray if you want to command influence influence has monetary value people will pay you and bless you in a way that will bring tears out of your eyes and you will say Lord what what is this what are you doing to me for if the cloud be full of rain the Bible says they empty themselves upon the earth. Men of God, God is challenging us tonight. Stop being a mediocre. Surround yourself with three or four friends and say among all of them, I'm the one who prays most. That's nonsense. Mediocrity. I'm the one who has revelation more. Mediocrity.
somebody rides jam and gets 120 and his friend gets 80 and he turns and says kai but i gap you by how many points let's count no i'm not i'm not mocking it's, it's not a mockery i'm using it as an example don't feel bad if you didn't make it for jam in fact i, I hear they are going to write it we we'll pray for them at the end of the service it's a challenge it's a challenge i know that this teaching is touching some of you there are people who are seated right now you can pretend like what i'm saying is not serious there are many people standing outside right to the back some of them are just standing and thinking about their lives i want to excel in my life and i want my excellence to be intentional set a high standard koinonia set a high standard challenge yourself when god gives you that influence men will thank you for being influential your children will thank you i was sharing with the school of ministry students some of the things i do today is no longer for myself if it's for myself i will stop doing some things because i've already created a system that will bless myself i've started thinking transgenerational both spiritual and physical not just physical children that anybody connected to me will be implicated for success just by being associated and lot went with abraham the secret place of abraham implicated lot until he was blessed who gets blessed following you or are you the type parents who want their children about and say don't follow this this bad boy he's going to spoil your life please koinonia hear the voice of the spirit tonight it's time to settle down myself settle down and produce results stop guessing over your destiny prosperity is a reaction it's not dash advancement in ministry is a reaction we have never never said we'll raise a second offering in this ministry say oh we cannot pay for boss or we cannot do this no it has never happened and it will never happen in the name of jesus but it's, it's a formula it's a formula we don't have to manipulate you and squeeze your hand it's a formula find out what the formula is don't just enjoy and say kai this is a rich ministry find out what is the formula what is the secret of the anointing of the spirit upon our lives and the ministry find out do you care to find out are you humble enough to find out i always look at the people that are close to me and i always watch out for their interest in finding out process or results when I look at people who are close to me, I like to know what their passions are. If you are close to a man of God, there are pastors here, be careful because proximity can destroy your ability to learn. You are always seeing the result. Some of you come for Koinonia and you can sit down here and in the next five minutes, people are flying all over and just say, Kai Apostle is anointed. Do you know it is for the taking? Peter said, help me. And Jesus said, I can show you. Let me teach you what I'm doing that is making me standing. He lifted him. There is something you can learn. There is the secret of the war. There is a mystery you can learn. You can stand upon it. It's not abracadabra. It's not the more you see, the less you understand. The prophetic has a formula. The apostolic ministry has a formula. Don't guess in pride. Learn. Those who learn. Are the ones who rise please rise up on your feet we're going to pray and i want everyone to please pray make sure you always don't miss the time of prayer here every time we share truths like this we must take our time to pray lift your hands and give god praise for this word you have heard it will change your life I will rise in your name, Adonai, you reign on high. I will rise in your name, Adonai, you reign on high. One more time. Lord, I will rise. I like you to.
to lift your voice and shout it like your destiny depends on it say in the name of Jesus today I decree that I must produce results lift your voice and begin to pray results oh God rekete goto shekete embrakata labakata shekete kereto kore bababababa mandela kariyadabasha ekros kabariyadaba erarabariyadaba shekete bararararo yeah in your name Results, results. I pay attention to produce results. I pay attention. Results at the end of every argument. Results. The product of mastery. Results. The product of diligence. Results. The product of consistency. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. From today, I pay attention to laws, principles, and mysteries. I pay attention to the laws I need to know to excel. Lift your voice and pray for grace. Grace, oh God. I'm tired of poverty and suffering. I need to hold on to the loss. I'm tired of defeat and failure. I'm tired of everybody hating me. Everybody fighting me. There is something I need to know. Lord, show me the loss I'm violating. Show me the laws I'm violating. Show me the laws I'm violating. Kaparatos kebaradaba. Enketele koto sanababababa. Show me the laws I'm violating. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to mention every area of your life where you have not seen notable results and say every pride, every attitude stopping me from being humble to learn and produce results in that area. I take authority over you right now. Open your mouth and pray. Mention the area. Naaman was a captain of the Syrian army but 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 there was an area in his life please pray are you praying say Lord I humble myself I humble myself I humble myself I humble myself to learn I humble myself to master the art of war aparatoko shekete belere bosh lekate pras katabalaba e praparado soto pregede ba hallelujah one more prayer point before we have that prayer point, I want to make an altar call. Please, I want you to be serious tonight. We are not joking. Tonight is a very serious night. There are people here, inside and outside. From the beginning of my talk here, the word of God had come to you like, like a hammer. You know that you have mismanaged your life and you are seeking an opportunity to say, look, man of God, I've been looking for somebody to lead me to Christ. Tonight, right now, I'm going to make that altar call two kinds of people please 
There are many people outside. I know the Lord is showing me. There are people inside here. You are saying, man of God, I have managed my life by myself. And the truth is, I have mismanaged it. But God is giving me a new beginning. And I want to take advantage of it. You've never committed your heart to the Lord. Or you have done what you think you know to be Christianity. But with respect to what God is doing now, you know that you are not making any progress. Please, these two categories of people, I count one to five, oh, not one to five, as we are praying, make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. While they come out, the remaining of us, please lift your voice and pray. And say, Father, use me, use me, use me. Do business with me, oh God. Lift your voice and pray. Please make sure you don't sit back as the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. This is your moment of change. This is your moment of change. Don't let any friend or the family you came with make you sit back outside. No matter how far, make your way. Make your way to the front. Use me, oh God. He said, thou art my battle axe, my weapon of war. Thou art my battle axe, my weapon of war. Thou art my battle axe. Keep coming. God bless you. hallelujah listen those of you standing here i am very happy for you for this decision don't let anybody make you think you are wasting your time there are some of us you have destroyed your life with liquor smoking drinking all kinds of things giving yourself to any and everybody there is a new beginning god wants to rehabilitate your life you heard the story of this gentleman there are still people like that you know, I don't care whether you think you're a Christian or not. Alcohol, smoking, drinking, all kinds of things is destroying you. Please leave your seat and come and join them as I lead you to Jesus Christ. Leave your seat and come and join them. Even if everybody knows you in your area, it's time to make a change. It's time for a new beginning. Hallelujah. All of you here, some of you are giving your heart to Christ for the first time some of you are making up your mind to be serious with god you are welcome please lift your hands and i want you to pray with me just one hand your right hand i want you to mean business please if you know you are not going to be serious go back to your seat if you are here be serious you are not reciting a poem be very serious from the depth of your heart no pinching no laughing around you are serious while with god here say lord jesus i believe in you I believe you died for me this night I surrender my life I surrender my destiny to you I'm tired of wasting my life take over my life from this night I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that I will never be the same the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted father I break the power of sin over everyone lifting their hands here every habit and every demon and every power that is tying anyone's destiny down I lose you tonight in the name of Jesus every addiction everything that is not of god it dies and leaves you forever this night i'm praying for you from tonight you are stepping into a new dimension it will be from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen thank you so much i'd like you to follow a brother waving his hands please we need your details because we need to follow you up it's not enough for you to just give your life to christ we need to follow you up so please you have the details and um, they will guide you and give you more information celebrate them as they go all of you this way follow the gentleman celebrate them coin on your celebrate
Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.